Hey guys, JD here with the Kawasaki Ultra 310. Now in my last video, I showed you how to check your valve lash. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to shim your valves. So from my last video, you saw that my intake valves were all within spec and my exhaust valves were actually too tight. So before we get started here, you want to double check that your measurements that you took on your lash check were correct. I have some paper. Um, you're going to record the value of each valve. We're going to need that value in order to reshim these valves. So you need a feeler gauge like this one here, and you're going to go through and determine your valve lash. You're then going to record that, and we're going to use those measurements that we've recorded in order to reshim our valves. All right, so before we remove the cam caps here and before we remove the camshaft, you have to make sure that your number one, number four cylinders are at top dead center, and you need to make sure your timing marks right here on either end of the cam sprockets are aligned as follows. All right, so this is our exhaust sprocket, and you can see that there are two timing marks Right there, those are at three o'clock. You have a single timing mark at nine o'clock and that's gonna correspond with a double timing mark on your intake cam sprocket, which is going to be at three o'clock and then a single mark at nine o'clock. On this, you could also see these paint marks pointing straight up. All right, now we're gonna use a paint marker just to create some marks on here, um, just for reference. So I'm gonna just do a line And uh, then I'm going to do a second reference mark. So the first thing we're going to do now is we are going to remove the camshaft chain tensioner. That is located right here. So you'll see that that has two 8 millimeter bolts and one 12 millimeter bolt. This is kind of how this assembly goes in. You can see it has this plastic chain tensioner right here. Now this is a, no a non-self resetting tensioner. So basically once you commit to removing it, it has to be removed and it has to be reset before it's reinstalled. Okay. So as you can see here, we're going to remove the cap bolt, which is a, the 12 millimeter bolt. There's a washer B there's a spring C and the rod D. And then we're going to remove bolts E and F. Those are those eight millimeter bolts on either side. So again, first we're going to remove this bolt right there. And once we get that loose, I'm going to go ahead and remove it by hand. It's, it should come right out here. Okay, and it's going to pop a little bit. So again, very careful. We don't want to drop any of these parts. There's the bolt. There's a spring and a washer. Okay. So I just want to show you. Here's your spring. Okay, it's got a shaft inside the spring. Okay. So you have your spring, your shaft, your washer, and your bolt. Do not drop these. Be very careful. Once you loosen this bolt, you want to take it out by hand very, very slowly. Our cam tensioner body bolts are 8 millimeter. There we go. You can see those had some blue Loctite. All right, so now we are ready to pull the tensioner assembly out and you can see this does have an o-ring that o-ring will need to be replaced our next step is going to be to loosen our cam cap bolts so the key is to loosen all of these bolts gradually at the same time and once you pop them they're pretty loose There are dowels in here. So one of my dowels came out in the cam cap. The other one is sitting right here. I want to be very careful about those, okay? So in my case, we're only adjusting our exhaust valves. So we're going to leave this camshaft sitting here. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pick up this one here. And then here is our exhaust cam. 
You can see my marks on there. And we're gonna go ahead and set this in a safe place. So I wanna show you the easiest way to pull up these lifters. And you're gonna do that with a magnet like this. So being very careful because it will just suck them right out. You're gonna place the magnet over and carefully lift up. And you'll see that those shims are sucked onto the, the top of the lifter there. Due to time constraints for this video, I'm not going to show you the process for every single valve, but I am going to show you the entire process on the first and the final valves. That includes removing the lifter, calculating the new shim size, installing the shim, and then reinstalling the lifter. Make sure to repeat this process for every single valve that needs to be adjusted. Okay, so we've got our number one lifter removed, and, and again, I'm going to go down the line like this. All right, so we've got our lifter removed and here is our shim. And you can see that the numbers on that are four or five. So then we're gonna go to our conversion table here. So four or five, that means that our shim thickness is 2.45. So first we're gonna take the measured shim thickness, that's 2.45. We're then gonna add our lash measurement, which was 0.38. We're then gonna subtract 0.55 from that number and that's gonna give us our new shim thickness which is 2.28. All right, so using our formula, we've determined that our new shim, we're gonna use 0.55 as our measurement because that's the top of the range. They're gonna tighten over time as well. So we want these to be at the top of that range, 0.55 millimeter. So using that in our calculation, our new shim is gonna be a 2.28 millimeter shim. There's our 2.28 shim. All right, so now we are going to install our new shim. We're going to set it right on top of our valve retainer right there. But before we do that, we're going to take a little bit of grease and we're just going to just dab it right on there. And we're going to go ahead, put that shim right in place. We're going to coat the top of that a lot and then we're going to reinstall. Okay, so our final cylinder number four, we're going to remove the first exhaust valve. So I'm going to use my magnet. We're going to carefully remove the lifter. We're going to figure out what size shim this is. And again, you might need to flip it over. This is a 4.5. All right, so 4.5. All right, so I've placed my new shim in place. I got a little bit of grease underneath it. Then I'm going to take some motor oil and we're going to slather it in motor oil. Then here is our lifter. Here we go, and then I just like to take a little bit of motor oil. All right, so I've got my lifter removed. I'm gonna do a teeny little bit of grease. We're gonna install the shim, being careful not to drop it into the engine. I'm then gonna put a lot of motor oil. Okay, so we've got all our shims installed, and now we're gonna make sure that these dowels, you could see dowel one right there. Dowel two here came out with the cam cap. So we are gonna go ahead and reinstall that dowel right there. We're now gonna go and put our exhaust camshaft back in place. Okay. All right, so I just wanna show you, you can see my marks that I've made. Those line up perfectly with my chain links, okay? I made two separate ones, they're perfectly aligned. Coat all the components in motor oil or assembly lube. Do not get this motor oil into the bolt holes. And again, being careful that your dowels are aligned. Here's our chain guide right here. We're just gonna start to get this in place. And then we're gonna take our two silver bolts, right? And you can see also there's a little arrow on the cam cap. So we're gonna install these first. So while holding the chain in place there, we're gonna go ahead and start getting all of our bolts in place. Again, we're not tightening or torquing these, we're just getting them all snug. So before you can tighten this, you have to have tension on the chain tensioner. Now you see that chain is tensioned right now, but you can't do it by hand. So what we need to do is we need to reinstall the chain tensioner, but without the center bolt installed. So what we're going to do is we first have to reset this chain tensioner. And we're going to reset that by lifting this little stop right here. And you're going to get it like that. All right. So you just, uh, this little cam here, you just push it in. 
and then that'll uh, allow you to push that back in. Now this part here, they call it the stopper, that needs to be facing downwards. Uh, we have a brand new O-ring in place. We're gonna go ahead and put some grease on that O-ring. I took it out, so we're gonna go ahead and install this now. Put a little dab of blue Loctite on these bolts. Okay, so now I've got my chain tensioner installed without the center bolt, the rod, or the spring. And now we're gonna go ahead and start tightening our cam cap here. We're not torquing it yet, we're just tightening it. So there we go, our cam cap is tightened. It's not torqued yet, it's just snug so that our, our cam shafts are in place. You can see right there that our original marks are aligned. We still have, um, the chain's a little bit uh, loose here. And uh, so it's not gonna tighten up until we put that tensioner back in. We're now ready to torque all our valve cap bolts. We've got everything seated correctly. Uh, so now we're gonna go through and torque each of these to 106 inch pounds. All right, so we're gonna start here. This is bolt number one, 106 inch pounds. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, then we go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then we go 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and finally 20. So there you go. I, I tightened these already. I'm just showing you that um, 106 inch pounds, they need to be checked. All right, so now that those are torqued, we're gonna reinstall our chain tensioner. So remember, you have a spring, you have this rod, you have the nut and the washer. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall that now. Okay, so here we have 15 foot-pounds. Okay, perfect. We're gonna turn the engine over with our belt wrench a couple times in order to make sure that we didn't screw anything up. After the engine is turned over, those paint marks won't align anymore uh, or they'll wipe off completely from the oil bath. So make sure they're correct now because this is your last chance. So I just wanna show you now that basically my exhaust valves were out of range. They were all pretty tight for the most part. And I use this number, this 0.55 or 0.22 inches as my number when doing my shim calculations, basically, these should all now be shimmed to the top of that range. So that's 0.22 inches. Perfect. We want to make sure that everything is primed up really nice here. Make sure to reassemble everything as you took it apart. Anyway, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. If this video is helpful, please click the like button. Apparently, that helps this video in the algorithm. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more exclusive jet ski content only on JD's Waterworld.